Welcome to Fish and Hunt. I'm Dave Butfield. And I'm Bo Scott. This week, we're in the beautiful Hawkesbury River. Mate, what a perfect morning. Oh, beautiful morning. Uh, no wind about and the sun's up and wouldn't want to be anywhere else, Dave. That's right. Now, we're going out with Ron Osman. He's a legend of these waterways and uh, I've been out with Ron and we've caught some great fish. It's Hawkesbury Fishing Charters. So, mate, I reckon Ron will get us some good fish and because we've got a jam-packed show today. Yeah, we've got a lot on. We've got some crabs. I'm going to uh, go through a few crabbing techniques. Yes. Um, blue swimmer crabs, hopefully. Might get a mud crab amongst them, that'll be very nice. After that, we're going to head off and do a little bit of squid, and there's some big squid about at the minute, I've been told. Yeah, Ron said there's some uh, big squid around, so we'll give that a go. We'll show you how to squid jig, and hope we'll get a few of them. And then we'll move back inside again, and uh, we'll go for some blackfish. Last time I came out with Ron, he kicked my butt, and uh, he got about 40, I got about two. A <laughs> uh, bit of a technique, mate. Uh, we're using centipede reels, so there's going to be line going everywhere. I know what we're like. We like the spin gear, uh, and it's going to be a bit of fun. It will be a bit of fun. I've never used a centipede reel before, so I'm looking forward to learning a new technique, and hopefully we can get some blackfish on the boat. Don't, don't expect to get too many, because I know Ron will catch them all. Now, even though we're in the Hawkesbury River, it's all about techniques, showing you how to fish, and you use these techniques in your local waterways, and you will produce some fish. So, mate, I reckon we get our gear ready. Sounds like a plan to me. I think we should get amongst it now. Yeah, let's go. Trying to survive, barely getting by. Feels like a lifetime till payday. Come the weekend, I'm gone again Fishing my cares away So if I hook a big one Or I hook a small one I'm hooked on fishing again I'm hooked on fishing again It's a picture perfect morning as we leave the boat ramp at Parsley Bay. Bo and myself are so excited about the day ahead as it's going to be a jam packed day of fishing. This system holds a wide range of different fish species and sometimes you just don't know what you're going to come across. But first up, it's out with the crab traps as they need time to soak in the water. So Ron, we're um, using a few different baits today, floated in that one, but I guess you can use a bit of anything for bait, can't you? Anything, doesn't matter, people buy chicken necks, and if I was going to buy bait, I'd probably buy a mullet, yep. but um, just an oily, stinky fish, but I just tend to, don't really buy bait, just use whatever, yeah, whatever's going, whatever yeah. we've been catching, I just keep my heads. And the length of the rope's pretty important, obviously, you need, you need enough length for the traps to be on the bottom, Yep. to yep. not bring them up off the bottom with a bit of tide or a bit of seaweed. And I guess the boys, so obviously very important, so you can come back and pick your traps up. Yep. Legal requirements, um, we've changed them to, we're going to have HN, hoop net. Um, we're going to on this one. First, um, first initial. First, first initial, last name, postcode, and what is it? The date, date of birth. Date of birth, yep. so I guess if the fisheries come across, this is what you need on your boys to uh, recognise whose they are, otherwise they'll take them away from you. What about nets? Is there a limit to how many nets you'll have per person? Yeah, four per person. It used to be five, they've just changed it. And uh, they put the mud crab traps up to two per person now, so. Ron's rigging up the last crab trap. Once we drop this in the water, we'll make a move to pit water and try our luck on Southern Calamari. The Southern Calamari seem to be more productive in the winter months so it shouldn't take too long to hook up. So Ron, here we are, this is... Oh, there we go. You on, mate? Well, we're just about to have a chat, Ron, and uh, uh, this is a little spot here, is a good little spot for squid, and we're in pit water at the moment, and uh, we're just talking off camera saying, you know, pit water is a great squidding spot, but it's everywhere, isn't it? It's not in one spot, it's not condensed in one spot. Well, there he is, and... Uh, that's a good size squid, good eating squid, Beautiful good dewy bait eh? squid. Good size one, Ron. Yeah, All right. 
you think you couldn't got a bigger bigger net for us, mate? Oh, there you think. There you go. Oh. <laughs> 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 and these are the Daiwa squid jigs. And I was just saying the Ron, um, different to the cloth. These are they've got a smooth coating on it. They're like a plastic material. Um, also, they have um, this kind of abalone shell on the back, and they call that a hit mark. And what that's supposed to represent is um, a, a prawn being hit. It's a, like a wounded mark where another squid's come along and hit it. And um, it's just a attractant. Uh, but these work great. This is about a two and a half. You can use the bigger ones in this area because the, these bigger squid will take that. But uh, the green colour for the green eyes, I like the green. It works quite well, but the diver's got a great range of colours to choose from. It's a beautiful squid. And uh, we've only been here for 30 seconds and we've got one already. So uh, we're going to put him in the live well. Uh, we'll get some more jigs out um, and we'll talk about jigging, how to do it. And uh, there's different techniques. You can go pretty aggressive, you can go soft, but uh, we'll get him in the live well and we'll get some more squid jigs back out in the water. Okay, and so what we're looking for here, we're looking for all them bait in the background mm. jumping out. So much bait around at the moment, which is good for the squid too, because that's what they'll be feeding on. And so we've got our squid jig out, count about three or four seconds, and then you just go rip, rip, and that's it. Uh, look, it's a great sport. It's getting bigger and bigger every year, squid jigging in Australia. Uh, over Japan and all them areas, it, it's massive. But we've got some of the best squidding uh, fisheries around. You go down the Tasmanian, there's giant squid down there. It's mainly on the weed bed, but isn't it they hang around and I yeah. guess we're pretty lucky where we are here or sort of lucky and sort of not. There's lots of weed in the pit water area. And, That's right. Um, they sort of hang around, they hang around in the weed waiting for a feed to come past and they'll shoot out of the weed and, and grab it. Come on mate. And it's alright too. Oh, good ah, work. Ah, you dropped it. Stemmed it. Hang on, throw one out there. No, you could be, you might jump back on. That was a good squid too. Yeah. Bugger. I bet it's the same squid too. I bet it is. I bet it is. Nah. Nah. The smaller one, Ron. You, you want the little net? I oh, know you're right with that one. Dave, you should get yours out the side here, mate. Mate, bro, that was a good squid, bro. It was. It was pulling hard. All right, Ron, we've had a bit of fun on the squid this morning. Uh, we're just going to get some yellowtail or yuccas. Uh, we've got a bit of a bait jig here. Smallest hook you can get? Yeah, smallest. They're tiny. I think they're a size 10, they call them. Yeah. Or four. Sorry, size four. Okay. And um, burling up's pretty important. Yeah, um, definitely you've important. Done a little bit of burling up here now. Actually, you can see all the yellow tail and yuckers there. Then? See the little kingfish come up? Darting past there, yeah. Yeah, so, it's only tiny. So it's pretty simple. Throw it over, wait on. Just like that, eh? That's it. Bring him in. All right, that's that simple. Throw them over and straight on board. How you going there, Bo? Yeah, we're getting a few bait here now, so... Oops, um, I'll pick him that's up. That's how you get him off the hook, nice and easy. <laughs> well, Bo, that was pretty easy getting the bait. Yeah, it was, mate. Uh, a bit of burly bait jig. What do you reckon? We've got about 20 yakkers? Yeah, 20 yakkers. We've got, still got our squid. Yep. Haven't got much uh, time left in the tide. so. I've no, got the run out tide. That's right. So. And so we're going to go for some blackfish. We've got about an hour left. So yep. Ron's got some weed there. And we'll get the old center pins out. Yep. And uh, see if we can pull a couple of blackfish in. Because there's some big blackfish in the Hawkshire. A lot of people don't realize yeah. there's some great blackfish in. So um, we'll get our gear ready and go head down the road and uh, see if we can pull in a few blackfish. All right, Ron, we've pulled up here. The bait is weed. What, what, can you just run us through what you're trying to achieve by... Uh... Yeah, this, uh, this is the string weed. So you can get it just about anywhere. It grows in drains, uh, rock platforms. So yep. as you get it from the rock platforms... It's getting nice. hard to get now, isn't it, Ron? A lot of councils are poisoning it. Yeah, yeah, on the inside lakes they are. Uh, Tuggle Lakes and that, they're trying to get rid of it. Because uh, when it dies, it absolutely stinks, you know, when it washes up. And yep. I'm just cutting it up really fine like this, and I'm going to chuck that in me... Uh, bucket of sand, Yep. mix it up as much as I can. I bet the key of it too is have that burly, that's what really gets them going. Yep, yeah, yeah, sometimes you'll be sitting here for 20 minutes before they come on. And that's it, and you just grab a hunk, 
cup it a little bit like that and throw it in the water. And if you just see how it sinks, yep. sinks and dis dissipates because you've clumped it up like that. But if you just get a little bit like that and throw it on the top, it's only on top. All right, what do you reckon? We get some gear down and get it ready and, and get our lines in the water? Mate, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because I know I struggled last <laughs> time getting them and this, and, this man here was just pulling in left, right and centre. And this uh, will be the first time this year that I've fished for them, so I haven't even tried. So right. hopefully we can get a few. Well done. I'll be yes when I get it in the boat. <laughs> uh, there we baby. go. Well At the done. moment, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, first fish. There you go. Just a little baby, but still uh, coming to grips with the technique at the moment, Dave. Oh, technique? God, I've got no technique. I've just got to fix the mess up, and hopefully a <laughs> fish bites it. So uh, there's our blackie. So only a small one, mate, but um, there's still some bigger ones out there. All right, we'll get that back in. So we'll weed up and. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit of, you know, because I'm used to using spin gear and bow myself. Just having that line peel off, there's no drag on these at all. Yeah, so you've got to keep your eye on the line, make sure that doesn't fall off the side. And we've got the wind that's pushing on the line that's pushing it off the reel. That is. Making all the excuses up there. Yeah, that yeah. is. We're the best at making excuses. <laughs> bow! Oh, I was only pulling it back in too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Does that count, Ron? Uh, it counts in my book. <laughs> 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 I was only pulling it back in to check if I had bait on it, and uh, he's grabbed him on the way up. <laughs> yeah, Beautiful. Oh, there you go, eh? There you go. Might be the biggest of the day, too. Nah, <laughs> far off, my friend, far off. Uh, Wait, you see the big one. Hi, I'm Jackie M and I'm a Malaysian cook based here in Sydney, Australia and I also happen to be good friends with Dave Budfield which is very handy because Dave likes to fish and I like to cook. As you would have seen earlier in the show, he's had a very productive morning catching some blackfish and he's also very kindly dropped some off for me as well. So I'm going to show you uh, how I would prepare it in a hurry because I like to keep things quick and simple, okay? I'm just going to turn on this pan quickly while I continue talking. What I'm going to do with this fish now, being Malaysian, we tend to like to keep our fish looking like fish. So I'm not going to try and fillet this, I'm going to cook this whole. And I've just managed to pull out a couple of ingredients from my fridge and from my pantry. I've got some curry leaves, very popular uh, in Malaysian curries. I've also got, got some kaffir lime leaves. These will give a very nice tangy zest to your finished product. And I've just got some bird's eye chilli and I've got a prepared curry paste mixture. This is a Malaysian product, you can pick them up over at your local Asian grocery store really. And I've just got some coconut cream over here. Now with the fish, I'm just going to add some oil to this pan that I've just started heating up. You don't need to use too much oil. But with the fish, I'm just going to rub a little bit of salt on it and also rub it with a little bit of this is tapioca starch. You can use cornstarch. They essentially do the same thing. I use tapioca starch because it's quite common in Asian uh, pantries, really. Okay, so let's just put this on and start cooking. I'm using portable stoves here for a reason, because in case you're outdoor camping, you can see how you can put all this together very, very quickly. Now, I'm just heating up this wok here. And to that, I'm going to add the curry paste, some water, and about 200 ml of coconut cream, which is about a one to two ratio of coconut cream to water. And with the paste, I've got about 200 grams of curry paste in there as well. But you can play around and adjust the amount that you use, so don't worry too much about measuring everything. In Malaysia, we have this concept called agak agak, which means guesswork, essentially. And that applies to a lot of how we do our cooking. It's not an exact science, and we appreciate that. So you, there's always an element of tasting, testing, and adjusting flavors. 
I'm just going to toss in the curry leaves now and the cafe lime leaves as well. And with this fish here, what I might do is actually just cut some slashes. Now just keep in mind that the fish is going to continue cooking a little bit after you remove it from the pan, so you don't want to cook it till it's completely cooked through. Because this saucepan is this pan is actually a little bit small for the fish, I might actually just try and cover it just to help it cook along a little bit better. And the steam that it creates within the pan is just going to help give it an even distribution of heat as well. Let's just taste this curry sauce. It's not bad actually. Okay, now the sauce is done. That's all it takes, as you can see, just literally a couple of minutes. And I'm just going to throw in some chilli because I like my chilli. But you can leave, leave this out, obviously, if you like uh, your curry to be milder. Okay, I think we're done. I'm just going to turn this off. I'm just going to leave the lid on this pan for a little bit longer. And then I'll serve it up, pour the curry sauce over it and show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, so this fish has cooked for about four or five minutes, I would say. And just a couple of minutes on the sauce. I'm just going to serve it up now. and pour the sauce over it. So you can see how very, very quickly and easily you can put something like this together. And it's going to taste beautiful as well. So what I've done, as you can see, just within four or five minutes is just dusted the fish with a little bit of tapioca flour, pan fried it and at the same time I've just heated through some curry sauce made with a prepared curry mix with uh, some extra uh, herbs added into the mix just to make it a little bit more interesting and uh, if you need the actual recipe or you want to find out more about the other things that I do just visit my website which is uh, jackiem.com.au but in the meantime why don't we go back to Dave and see what he's up to now Right, just run us through how we how we bait up for these blackfish today, Ron. Yeah, you want a nice long skinny bit of weed. Sometimes you get weed, it's only short, you've got to twist it together and yep. so you get a nice long bit, it's only got a tiny little hook. We've got small mouths. And we're using a float there obviously. Yeah, got the float, little running float, it's gonna go up and hit our float stopper. Yep. So at the moment that's how far down there. So about a metre? Yeah, it depends where you're fishing, you know. You will know when you get hooked up on the bottom, you just gotta go a little bit shallower or yep. just go out a little bit further. Yep. Get your nice long skinny bit of weed, just lay it on about halfway just above your hook. Round and round and round a few times. And get the other bit and go round and round the other way. Oh, very good. That's about it, pull off any excess. Yep. That's it, when it hits the water it'll dag down a bit. A lot of people use two hook rig, you can have another little hook coming off here with a bit shorter, shorter leader, but one's enough. Chop it in. And the good thing about these reels is you can just drop it in and you can just let go and it just goes out by itself. And you just got to wait for it to go straight down. If it lays over, goes down an angle like that, it means it's stuck on the bottom. Yep. If it goes straight down, it'll be a fish. You reckon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, come on! Oh. Ron, what am I doing wrong? No, I would have left it. Oh, I said the mistake there. That was that was just way too too quick. Too quick, but yo, oh, no, 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 no. You're oh. 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> he's pulling me line. That's a better fish, Not mate. A bad fish either. Look at all the bait there. Oh no. Oh, no. he's on again. Too good. We'll give you that good channel down there, that's the problem. Have a little one. Yeah, I gave you guys a dodgy spot. Have one, mate? Nah. I've got one. Oh, yes, he's on. Get out. On the way back in. Oh, that so wasn't a strike. So you were trawling? Yeah, twice. That's the only ones I've got, trawling. <laughs>
Oh, how Tra big's that fish? <laughs> trawling for blackfish. Hey, you might know the net. You got the net there? Right the in. little one? Huh? The squid net. <laughs> the squid net, yeah. Oh, well, we've had a little bit of fun. We're going to make a move now, I think, yeah. and try another spot. There's plenty of little fish here. Great fun. First time we've experienced this sort of fishing. A little bit to get used to the new technique, but um, we'll make a move and see if we can get some bigger ones on the boat. Oh, well, it's gone a little bit quiet here, Dave. Looks like the tide's just about stopped. Sure has. We need that to... Um, we need that for the blackfish. Obviously, the float our floats along the, the edge of this rocks here, and probably time for a move and uh, try something different. Well, we'll wait for that tide to really start turning and changing, going the other direction, and then we can go and chase some jewfish. Uh, as you've seen, we've got some squid, uh, we've got some blackfish. I wouldn't say we're good at it. Oh, Ron in the background there has just fired up and got a few. And we got some small ones. It's good fun. I love it. It's a good laugh. And Yeah, it uh, is. There's yeah. definitely a bit of technique to it with these uh, Albi Blackfish reels. Yeah. But um, yeah, awesome fun to, to learn a new technique. And a couple of fish, nothing massive. We've got a few good hookups there on some big fish. But That's right. didn't man to land, manage to land them. So here we are boys, it's been a very fulfilling day, a big day, but uh, we covered a lot of ground, didn't we? It was a big day, it was a beautiful day on the water. It was. We, uh, we managed to cover a lot of different fishing techniques, mm -hmm. and we, uh, yeah, we had a good day, we've, we've done crabbing. Yes, sure did, we've uh, still got crab pots out, we'll check them later. Check them later. Blue swimmer crabs, we done a bit of squidding, you got a good yep. squid there, oh, I dropped a good squid, but um, yep. fun yep. on the blackfish, yeah, that was something fun. I haven't done before, and picking up the technique was, uh, yeah, an experience, and we've got a couple of little ones. Yeah, uh, great fun, but really enjoyed it. The man here, Ron, blackfish. killed it. Killed all the blackfish. <laughs> my, my favourite fishing. Yeah, and that was great fun, and that's what it's all about: getting out there, having a go. And we've got to thank Ron, Ron Osman from Hawksby Fishing Charters, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure, and you always get us fish all yeah. the time. Oh, well, you know, not always. Don't always get fish. But... Oh, we, well, you do very well. But uh, anyone can do this and experience the same sort of stuff. You can do a variety of different fishing throughout the day. Yep, yep, definitely. Yeah, you get the bream and the, the blackfish, and then you get your valley tail of. Leather jackets during the, the winter and then during summer we chase the kingfish around up in pit water and the jewies down the river. Flatties are a backup. I guess until next time, you've been watching Fish and Hunt Australia and we'll see you somewhere around this great land of ours. See you later. Weekend, I'm gone again, fishing my cares away. So if I hook a big one or I hook a small one, I'm hooked. Down fishing again. I'm hooked on fishing again.